This is Crazy Softball Dad, and today I am here with Julia from Wilson Sporting Goods. And today, Julia is going to talk about the Louisville Slugger Bats for a fast pitch. And uh, um, Julia, what, let's get right into it. So we know that there's a variety of bats that girls use. So let's just get right in and tell us what bats are really good for which type of hitters because that seems to be the biggest challenge that our parents are having so go at it julia for sure um so our release date for the 2021 line I'm just gonna start with that um has changed a couple times because of covid and just seasons being postponed and stuff um so i'm gonna talk a little bit about the xeno or sorry the louisville slugger line that's out right now the 2020 line um in terms of 2021, you can expect it to be um, familiar with those bats, just in a little bit um, more upgraded from last year's version. So everything that I'm going to say is going to hold true through next year's line. Um, but I'm just going to talk about kind of what's available now. Just know that it, it does translate into the 2021 line. Um, so I'm going to start with the Zeno. The Zeno is the oldest out of the three. Um, it's been huge since it came out. It's many years into the iterations, but um, it, there's a reason that it's still one of the most popular bats out there. Uh, the sound kind of revolutionized the game. Uh, I think a lot of the young girls that are using one now don't really appreciate that, but I know girls my age uh, were there when the first Xenos came out, and that sound was uh, just wild uh, when it first came out, and everybody was kind of on one side or the other, um, but the performance was hard to ignore. So quickly gained some traction and now that sound is kind of synonymous with hard hits and success so um kind of a huge staple in, in the game of fast pitch but the xeno is going to be um obviously characterized by that that uh crystal kind of sound it's really crisp um the xeno is going to be the most powerful in terms of swing weight out of the three um so what i mean by that is i know we talked a little bit on the last episode with Dean marini about MOIs. Um, so in general, the higher an MOI of a bat, the heavier it feels. Um, so you can have two bats that both weigh 20 ounces, but are weighted differently. So when we talk about balanced versus unloaded, mid-loaded, that kind of terminology is referencing MOI. Um, and those are just kind of subjective words that describe a range of MOIs. Um, the Xeno is going to be ranging in the heavier MOIs. It's still, a, it's, a, it's a really nice spot on that scale so it's not going to be too heavy it's not necessarily this end loaded bat that's going to be hard to swing um it's it's a good balance of like a solid moi and just overall good swing weight um, but it is going to be the heaviest of the three so out of out of the three they're all fairly balanced but this is going to be the heaviest of them um, so that means a little bit more uh force behind the ball and then on top of that it's also the stiffest so the connection piece that we have on there. Um, I'll talk a little bit later about the RXT, but it's gonna look similar to the RXT and that's because they are really similar. Um, so that's gonna be our stiffest option in the middle, um, which is gonna give you more feedback on balls um, and just give you more energy transfer through the ball. Um, so if I'm, you're gonna have energy transfer through that stiffness and then high MOI in relative to the others. Um, so if I had to place that on a certain player, I would say somebody that's getting a lot of RBIs, um, kind of shooting gap to gap, going for home runs, four hitter, somebody that's really driving the ball for distance. Um, and then if, talk, to talk a little bit about the tech in that one. That one has two discs in it. Um, I don't know if you're, we talked a little bit about kind of yep. governors and bats last time, but um, for those that aren't familiar, there are different ways that we keep bats safe um, and discs are one of those ways. So we'll put a disc inside of the bat um, to kind of govern the performance and get it into a zone that's hot, but also safe for play and regulated. Um, and so at Louisville Slugger, we like to use a lot of um, methods that give you a bat that's hot out of the wrapper, so you're ready to use it right when you get it, um, but then it also keeps it safe. And so we're not, we're not trying to create a bat that's gonna get us in trouble or get you in trouble. We, we just wanna give you that consistent performance as soon as possible out of the wrapper. And so the disc technology that we use uh, really delivers that performance. Um, and in the Xeno, there's two discs. And so that's kind of how you get that characterized sound. Um, so when I talk about the discs in each of these bats, that'll kind of uh, connect with the sound of each piece. Um, 
And so the sound of the Xeno is similar to the sound of the MXT because the disc design is similar. Now they're not exactly the same, but neither are the sounds. So that'll kind of make sense. But we have two discs in the Xeno that just gives it the feel that it has in the sweet spot. It gives it the sound, kind of characterizes that barrel. Um, so that's, that's the synopsis on the Xeno. Does that, do you have any other questions about the Xeno? Yeah, you hit it right on the nut where, who that bat's for, who's gonna benefit from it. So that's great. All right, so then I'm going to do the LXT. I'm going to get back to the RXT kind of in the middle, but the LXT um, is going to be the lightest swinging bat of the three. So that one's going to have the highest bat speed, highest bat control. It's also the most flexible. So it's going to be, instead of the Xeno being a two-piece design, it's going to be a three-piece design. Um, and so the way that works is there's just going to be more... Um, more motion kind of in that joint. You're going to be able to get more reduction of vibration through that swing. So you're going to get less feedback, um, which kind of translates to a, a wider feeling sweet spot. So more, more balls are going to feel really good on that bat. Um, and then both, both bats have excellent pop. This one is just going to be for those players that are looking to increase their uh, swing speed, barrel control. Um, it's offered in a wide variety of swing sizes. So kind of to backtrack, I, just, I did forget about the Xeno. The Xeno is offered in a drop eight, a drop nine, a drop 10, and I believe a drop 11. Um, so a wide variety of sizes can fit all players. So like I said, it can be used for a power hitter. For sure in that drop eight and drop nine, those are power hitters. Drop 10, drop 11, girls that aren't necessarily power hitters but like that feel, totally them, for them too. Um, with the LXT, it's lighter swinging a little bit, so we offer a drop 12, which is lighter than we offer in the Xeno. Um, so drop 12, 11, 10, 9, and 8. So we offer a wider range, and the widest range out of our fast pitch line is um, with the LXT, and that's kind of because it's our, our most popular at the moment. Um, we also offer customs in the LXT. So if you go through our website at louisvilleslugger.com or wilson.com, um, you can kind of navigate your way to our custom builder. Um, we actually end up building all of those in our facility here in Hillsboro, Oregon. So um, we are working hard during COVID to get those to you. Uh, I think not an official word on it, but I think we're one to two weeks delayed just because of COVID. Um, so if you're looking to order a custom bat, that's something you can kind of expect, but it's kind of across the board with most things these days with shipping. Uh, but back to the LXT. So um, if you notice, the connection piece on an LXT is a little bit different than on the RXT and the Xeno. Um, so that's going to be that, that three-piece design right there. You're going to be able to visually see that technology and how it's different. And um, that's going to give you that flexible, uh, more dampening feel on those, on those balls. And I know we talked about this before, but like stiffness and feedback versus forgiveness and flexibility, um, two completely different player profiles that have nothing to do with skill. Um, so there are, there are girls that really like uh, flexible, forgiving bats. They like miss hits to feel, they like every ball to feel like they crushed it. And there are girls that really like um, feedback and stiffness and being able to kind of like differentiate, okay, I can tell I missed that one it's two inches from the end cap or that one is right two inches from my taper. Um, so you can kind of figure out and make adjustments based on on where you felt the ball and how it felt different. Um, neither of those two things relate to skill. They are completely different, um, it's separate from that. So it's, you can be super skilled and really like a flexible bat. You can be super skilled and like a really stiff bat. You can be really new to the game and like one and really new to the game and like the other. So that's com completely a preference thing. Um, and there's no reason that a player should feel like they should be using this one if they want to be good, if that makes sense. Um, like, yep. So, for example, and the reason I say that is because when we look at uh, really high performers, so Division One hitters, professional hitters, um, even professional baseball hitters, it, it kind of all translates when you get to um, that top 1% is um, they really prefer stiffness at that level, and that's just a generalization. It not, doesn't necessarily mean that if you're good, you like stiff bats. It's just a generalization. But um, to like kind of go against that, we talked about this earlier, is uh, one of our pros that we sponsor is Amanda Chittister. And so we would profile her as one of the top hitters in the world. She's on Team USA to like a stiff bat. So she would, in the slugger line, probably like a Zeno. Um, but her player preference is that she really likes flexible for getting bats. She likes all of the balls to feel like she crushed them. She doesn't necessarily like that feedback and stiffness that other players like. 
and that we would guess she would have. Um, so she likes to swing a more flexible bat. She actually swings a CF, but um, in terms of movable slugger, she would probably end up going with an LXT or maybe an RXT. I, I would say probably LXT, but um, so I just kind of wanted to touch on that and mention that like there are different keywords that are out there or different things that will make players or parents kind of think, all right, well, if I want my player to be the player that this bat is describing, then I should get that for him when it's more important to kind of find the bat that fits the player you are now and the things you like now, and then you can use that to grow and get better versus trying to grow to fit into a profile, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Um, I know we talked about that a little bit last time, but yeah. So back to the, <laughs> back to the, uh, the goods of the LXC. So I don't know if I touched on which player for specifically, but somebody that's, um, you know, probably hitting a lot of base hits, high average on base percentage, line drives. If that sounds like your daughter or you, that's probably the bat for you. Um, somebody that's uh, maybe you just want to go up in weight or length. It's a good bat to do that on because it's so balanced. Um, so it's something that it's an easier bat to transition into a bigger size. If you can keep something that's kind of a lighter swing weight, you'll have control through that transition. And maybe you're going from a 32 to a 33 and you're kind of unsure about that huge step. Um, this is a good bat to do that with because you're going to have that control, even though you're taking that step up. Um, in, in terms of the disc technology in this one, it's going to be a one disc versus the two and the uh, Xeno. Um, the one disc is going to give it just a slightly different sound and a slightly different feel. Um, they're both still tuned to the top performance that is allowed, um, but it's just going to be different. So it's not necessarily um, better or worse than the Xeno. It's just they're both two of the best bats that are out there right now. They're just very different to give those two player profiles kind of um, something that is tailored to their swing and their preference. Um, so that's that one disc is going to give it that little change in sound um, and that little change in feel. Um, and so usually I'll mention this, like I like both bats are great bats, like them both. That being said, personally, as a player, I love Xeno and I don't really swing the LXT. Nothing against the LXT. It's just that I really like stiff bats. I like that feedback. Um, that's something that I really enjoy about the Xeno and the LXT is tailored towards kind of the opposite player. So that's not something that I really gravitate towards. I was at a great bat. Absolutely. And I know a lot of girls that would prefer the LXT over the Xeno. It kind of goes one or the other. There's not generally a ton of girls that love both. If that's kind of what I'm saying. They're both great and they both kind of fit those two groups that don't really overlap. But the RXT is kind of cool. So the RXT came out last year. Um, the RXT kind of said like, there's those girls that like Xeno and don't like LXT. Those, those girls that like LXT and don't like Xeno, what do we give those girls in the middle or kind of both groups? And so they took the girls' favorite parts of the LXT and the favorite parts of the Xeno and put them into one bat. Um, and it's a really special bat. I really like the RXT. Um, it's got that stiffness from the Xeno. So if you look at the connection piece, it's going to be visually really similar. Uh, obviously, it's not exactly the same because it's tuned specifically to the RXT. Uh, but it is really similar in that two-piece design to the Xeno, which is going to give it that stiffness that girls really like about the Xeno. Um, it's going to have one disc in it, but it's a little bit different in terms of how it's installed. Um, we call it a hovering disc, so it's going to be a hovering disc inside of the barrel, um, which is going to give it more of a, a barrel feel and pop that's compared to the LXT, um, and flexibility in terms of that barrel. So it's going to feel kind of a little bit like the pop of the LXT with the stiffness of the Xeno, um, and then it's going to have a, a swing weight that's more similar to the LXT than the Xeno. So it's that light swinging bat, but with stiffness. Um, and in terms of sound, that's the part where it doesn't really overlap. It's uh, kind of its own unique sound. Um, so whereas Louisville Slugger has come to be characterized by that um, kind of crack sound of, of the Xeno and the LXT, um, this one's more of a, a smooth kind of solid classical composite sound. Um, so it's just a tiny bit different in terms of sound and just kind of switches it up. Um, but in, I would say for that player, it's kind of that overlap. So um, like I said, there's a lot of girls that live and breathe Xeno and the others that uh, live and breathe LXT and th those groups don't always overlap. Um, I've had a really hard time finding a girl that likes 
one of those and doesn't like the RXT as well. Um, so I guess another way of saying that is usually if you like the LXT, you like the RXT. And if you like the Xeno, you also like the RXT. So it's a really good uh, kind of combination of the best parts of both. Um, and so if you love the Xeno or you love the LXT and you're like totally dead set on those two, I would say stick with those. If, if those have done you well, no reason to stray. Um, if you want to try the RXT, m more than encourage that, but there's nothing wrong with the Xeno and the LXT the way they are. They're excellent. Like, no need to jump ship on those if you already love them. You found your spot. That's great. But you might also like the RXT. So the RXT definitely is liked by those players in both groups because it does have that kind of bridge connection between the two. Um, but the cool thing about the RXT is that it's it's different too from girls that don't necessarily like the Xeno and the LXT. It offers that third kind of option to tailor to um, somebody that necessarily hasn't swung a Louisville Slugger bat in the past. Maybe they didn't like the Xeno, maybe they don't like the LXT. The RXT is a combination of the best of both in its own unique feel. So it gives someone a third option to say like, you know what, yeah, I do want to swing a Louisville Slugger this year. This is, this is for me. Um, but yeah, I think the, the RXT is it's new, but I think it's, it's been really popular in the last um, year and a little bit that it's been out, and uh, we will be bringing that one back next year. Um, that one is offered now in the 2020 model in a drop 10. That was the only model that we dropped last year, um, and it was hugely successful. Like I said, tons of different girls from different kind of player profiles liked it and did well with it and were successful. Um, so we're gonna introduce a drop nine in that one as well. Um, so really excited about that one, really excited to kind of build on that platform and um, kind of grow it since it's the newest of the three. Um, but it's, it's, they're all three very well complemented by each other and they, they fill out that player profile really, really well. Sorry, excuse me, really, really well. And um, I know we talked about this last time too, but it's, it's nice to be able to look at a group of players, whether they're in the same age group or not, or different, different roles on the team, different roles in the lineup, um, different places in their development and be able to find a bat that is tailored to them versus just saying everyone from age 10 to age 20 is going to swing the same bat. It, it's nice to have those three options to say like, okay, well you get to pick the size, you pick the length, the, the swing weight, and then you also get to pick that feel. So um, yeah, the Louisville Slugger, line, Louisville Slugger line is very well rounded with the options it has in terms of, um, cu customization and personalization with that swing feel. Oh, that's great. So, um, and we talked about this last time when we talked about Dean Marini. So let's say we have a, a fairly new hitter. Um, she's been maybe swinging uh, two years, um, playing softball for two years, and parents are deciding they want to get her a new bat. And she's yeah. not a home run hitter. Are you going to steer her to the LXT? I would, and I would say especially um, if she's new, she's probably wanting to improve her swing speed and swing control. Um, and so I would say LXT because, for one, we offer that in a drop 12 and a drop 11. Um, and so it's going to be in something that innately does way less and has those options. Um, but then in terms of just a swing weight, um, if we were going to go drop 11 across the board, for this girl, um, because well, I guess we don't offer a drop 11 in the RXT yet, but say drop 11 Xeno or drop 11 LXT, that LXT is going to feel lighter, even at the same weight, just because of where the tech is in the bat. Um, and so I would steer her probably LXT. Um, and like I touched on earlier, a lot of it is feel too. So if she ends up trying a Xeno and loves the feel, I would for sure put her with a Xeno because hitting is confidence and hitting is mental. Um, yep. So we do offer these these three different profiles, um, and we have these players in mind. But like I said, a lot of it is preference. Um, and so what you feel in your hands is the best bat for you is the best bat for you. You should trust what you feel and what you know. Um, we offer these explanations and these player profiles to help you find that if you don't know what you're looking for. But once you find it, trust yourself and go with it. Um, and so I would say I would steer her to an LXT, but if she told me otherwise – with her swing or performance with another bat, I would go with that. Um, and then we also, I believe, it is going to be called the Nexus. Um, it's gonna be kind of our entry level fast pitch bat. So it's gonna be composite still, 
um, and that's going to be kind of our lower price point, but still high performing composite bat uh, for that player that's looking for something lightweight and, and um, just kind of to build their skill level in softball before they kind of graduate to those more expensive high performance bats um, and maybe in a higher swing weight after that. So um, I believe it's still going to be called the Nexus this next year when it's 2021. Um, so you can watch for that one next year too. But other than that, I would say Nexus or LXT for that player. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, these are great uh, advice for parents trying to jump and go spend that money on the bat. And it's a lot of money. You know, and it's, it, we like it, we talked last time, we go through it a lot where parents will go buy what they see the best hitter hitting. And, and that's yeah. just the wrong, uh, wrong right. message most of the time, you know, um, it's yeah. it's not the bat so much as the swing. So if they're if that's not meeting their swing style, they're not going to get the same performance, and they're going to be really upset. So uh, this right. is really good for parents to listen and and understand the different bats. Mm -hmm. So no, this is great. Um, do you have anything else you want to tell us about twenty twenty one? Um, I was just going to say I. I I was going to mention this last time and I forgot. Um, it was something that we've been talking a lot about in our, in our group here in R&D. Um, just kind of a, we work on baseball, slow pitch, and fast pitch, and it was just kind of this thing that we've talked about between the disconnect between baseball and fast pitch that we don't really understand. Um, it's kind of weird. But so for baseball, we all know that, like, you're always pushing a heavier weight, right? You're always pushing that boy to the next heaviest weight. As soon as he's comfortable – his drop 10, push him to a drop eight. As soon as he's comfortable with that drop eight, push to drop five um, with the eventual goal of drop three, right? Um, and so when we're sizing for baseball, that's what we're looking for is like, can we move you up? That's always the next question is, can we move you up? Um, and with softball, we don't, we don't do that. Um, and even in baseball, when, when girls, or, sorry, when boys are breaking bats, so when they're going through two, three, four bats a year where they're sending them back for warranty or getting a new one, um, generally that's less of an indicator of the bat being defective as it is. It's more of an indicator of that, that kid is overperforming for that size bat. Um, so we get a lot of kids that will, will contact us and say, Hey, my, my kid went through five drop tens last year. And our solution for that isn't go to a different brand or find a different bat. It's you're ready for a drop eight because you're swinging so hard that you're maxing out the performance on that bat and the bat's doing its job. The, we design the bat to break when you're maxing out performance for safety. Um, and that's the only way we're allowed to sell bats is if they're manufactured to that standard. Um, yeah. And so that's where we're like excited for that kid because as soon as they go up in weight, they're going to have better performance and a more durable bat. Um, and so that kind of is something that we don't tell girls in softball all the time and girls are getting stronger and faster and more talented yeah. every day. And we still see the trend of girls turning 12 years old and swinging and drop 10 and then graduating college and playing in the world series or potentially playing pro and swinging a drop 10. Um, and I, I just graduated college, um, not this past May, but the May before and girls on our team would, I played division one softball in college and girls on our team would go through a bat every month or two. Um, and they were swinging drop 10s. And so it's something that I never thought about playing softball until I got here. And we talked about how it is in baseball, where if you're a girl and, you're swinging a drop 10 and you're breaking one every, every month, every two months, or maybe you're going through two, three a year, somewhere where it feels like it's too many. Um, it might be time to try moving up. And I understand totally that softball and baseball are a different game. There's totally something to be said for the reaction time being different. Um, the ball moving in different ways. And that's totally tangibly different. Baseball does not have those aspects in their game. Sure. So we, we can't be, I, I think drop three in our game is outlandish. We're not going to get to that point just because of the physics of our game. It's different. Um, but I think it would benefit a lot of girls to push themselves to a higher, a higher weight or a longer length, especially if they're breaking bats often. Um, if you're not breaking bats often and you're still working on your swing speed, this is not for you. Yep. Stay, stay right. where you're at, master that, get, get where you're at, always try to be stronger and faster. Um, but this is for those girls that are like, wow, I'm going through four bats a year and I switched brands and I'm still going through four bats a year. Um, it's not necessarily that the bat isn't good. It's you're strong. Like you're a good hitter and hitters have 
been evolving and continue to evolve. And I think we're going to see a trend in the next couple of years of girls swinging heavier and heavier bats. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to touch on that since I, I forgot to bring it up last time, but um, just to kind of encourage parents and kids that if your kid is really high performing and is possibly thinking about it, try it. Like you can always go back if it doesn't work out. Um, but if you're looking at the physics of performance in, in bats and in softball, um, heavier bats swung at a, a similar or the similar swing speed as a lighter bat will perform better. Um, and that, that will give you more gains than picking the hottest bat out there. Um, so if you can swing the heaviest bat possible fastest, which kind of are two conflicting things, you want to have high sure. swing speed, heavy bat weight. If you can maximize those for your daughter or yourself, that will be the highest performing bat for you. Technology definitely helps, but swinging a drop 10 versus a drop nine is a much bigger difference in, in performance than swinging an LXT versus a Zeno, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's great advice because, I mean, we hear it, I hear it all the time, um, whether you're one manufacturer or another manufacturer, right. this these bats suck, they break all the time, and, you know, people ask me, you know, parents ask me, is the is this a defective bat? And, you know, I, I know a little bit. Not but, always. Right, for the most part, it's probably not. I mean... Uh, right. If if you're getting, uh, you know, two months, three months into it before you're seeing breakage, it's probably not defective, right? Is that a good right. assumption? Right. And so we do offer warranties, and I, I think right. we're really good with our warranties. Um, we don't want our bat breaking because of something we did wrong for you to be the reason that you leave our company. So um, we definitely honor our, our warranty claims, and we kind of we get back to those as fast as possible. Um, but if, if you're going through a lot, certainly look into why. Because it's yeah, no, that's the, great. The, the nature of just how many the chances of you getting four defective bats in a year, um, like if, if we were producing only defective bats, that would make sense. But defective bats are pretty rare. Um, it's probably because you're ready for the next next bat up if you're going through that many. No, that's great. And you know, for me, um, I broke two flippers last year, and you know. Now I know that it, it, it has something to do with it's that. It's because you're too good. You're too good. <laughs> Maybe I need to go to a 28 now. Um, mm -hmm. uh, no, that's great. That's great information for myself too, but for yeah. for all these kids. Because I do see, and, and it's typically the the kids with the really um, really fast bat speed that are it really is, yeah. crushing through the, the zone and they're breaking the bats and, and they yeah. feel that they're bad defective bat so that's really good information to know and, and i'll definitely um this will be real important for for people to hear this from you so they can understand the breakage yeah for sure well that's great um that we again can't thank you enough for all this great information and um parents love to understand what they're buying and this really helps them so we can't thank you enough and um yeah, do you have anything else you want to say about uh, 2021? Any secrets you got hidden over here? Or? The graphics are really cool. I do have are to they? say that. They look cool. I mean, I think they look nice every year, but I'm really excited about these ones. I like them. And, and let me just give you a half a second to plug because I I love it. Why don't you plug the, uh, the customized bats because that's awesome. Oh, yeah, the customs. So... We, Dee Marini and Louisville Slugger are both owned by Wilson. Um, we also partner with Evo Shield and ATEC. Um, so we're kind of a family of brands, but um, we make our custom Dee Marini bats and our custom LXTs from Louisville Slugger in our Hillsboro facility that I'm in right now. Um, and so our facility is super cool. If you're ever in Portland, Oregon, for sure look us up and try to get the tour post COVID. Uh, but it's, it's a really sweet facility. So. Um, we have our, our R&D is here, all of our manufacturing and production um, where we make our bats. And so you can kind of walk into the factory and see um, the assembly line. And, and then on the side of everything is our paint line, um, our custom decaling place. And so it's super cool to just kind of walk down there and, and see everybody's customs that they build. And um, we do baseball, fast pitch. We've done slow pitch in the past. We don't have any out right now that are customs, uh, but we kind of change our custom options uh, year to year and what we offer with 
paint and um, kind of decaling options where you can put your name, number, emojis, different things like that. So we're switching it up all the time with what we're offering. Um, the biggest switch that we had recently was that it used to be, I think, about $150 upcharge to do a custom bat versus a stock. Um, and now we're doing $50. Um, so that's not something that I see disappearing in the near future, um, but definitely take advantage of it while it is still here. Um, so it's, it's only $50 extra to go, go for that custom, and you get to do anything you want with it. Make it any color you want. Um, we also offer the option to grip it with like a thin or a thick grip, um, which is something that a lot of players don't even think about. That's something for you to um, have a preference on. Um, and then we also grip it based on which way you swing. So if you're righty or lefty, um, there are different ways to grip the bat. All bats are cust or all bats are produced for a righty. So if you look at a bat that you buy at the store or what the way your bat came, um, the way that it twists is for a righty. So it's supposed to go with your hands. Mm -hmm. um, and so to prolong the life of your grip as a lefty, we wrap it the other way, or if you're going to wrap it yourself, just go the opposite way that it was. Um, and that's going to kind of prolong the life of that grip. Um, that's something I've learned that a lot of people don't know about. And it's, it's just like a little tip that helps sometimes, but in our custom line, we'll do that for you. We'll get that sorted out. Um, uh, one thing about our customs, this is a little baseball related, but we cannot keep the goods two piece in stock. It's, a super popular BB core bat. Um, and so the kids have learned how to hack the system and they aren't able to get the stock version, but they'll, they're going crazy on the customs because they're only $50 extra. So um, since that one is out of stock, they've just been going nuts with trying to get the custom. So it's, it's been really cool to walk downstairs and see all the different kinds of the goods that are down there uh, because all the kids have figured that out and just kind of gone with it. Um, and that's also a hack that you can use in softball. If we ever run out of your size in a certain bat, check the custom builder and you can still get it um, with custom options, which is cool. So, Yeah, no, I, I'll say um, it, these kids, it, it's fashion and style is, is a big deal in sports too. So when they're up there with their own unique looking bat, people look at it like, oh, would they get a new bat? Where, you know, it's, and they kind of yeah, feel, cool. they feel good about it. Yeah, and we do offer our warranty through our customs as well. So if you end up getting a custom and you break it in a warranty safe way, um, we will honor that just the same as we would a stock bat. So I know a lot of girls worry about that, but we stand by our products either way. So you also get a really cool like decorative box and a little keychain, and it's a cool experience uh, to get a custom. So I would recommend doing it at least once in your life. Absolutely. I do too. Or just sign for fun. It's fun. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. We, uh, we gave, um, my daughter one for Christmas last year and she Christmas morning, she sat there and designed that bat and, you know, she hoped that she would get her number that she put on there but, yeah. <laughs> and she didn't, but that's all right. Um, yeah. for travel, she still has her number, but, uh, yeah, it, it's awesome. So, well, I can't thank you enough again. Um, we love talking yeah, thanks to you. Thanks for having me. Learning all about the bats and um, the fun stuff. So um, I hope everyone gets uh, a lot out of this. And um, again, I can't wait to see the 2021 lineup. And, and They're pretty. We'll, we'll have you come back maybe just to give us an update when those things are, are released. Yeah, so sure. thanks again and um, have a crazy day. Thanks, you too.